Welcome back. You're watching the Independent Republic of JJ and Nisiobi on Talk TV. Now, the Tories have approached their lowest point yet. A new large sample poll states they are heading for less than 100 seats at the general election, with senior ministers and even the Prime Minister himself at risk of losing his seats. Joining me to discuss this is my new cabinet, author, activist and commentator Keith Fraser, Talk TV contributor Esther Kraku and lawyer Andrew Eborn. <laughs> Good evening, cabinets. Good evening. Welcome. How are you doing? Welcome. So, the, the Tories, less than 100 seats? This is going to be complete obliteration. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? And <laughs> so, so, Salvation, who are talking about the starvation of the Tories, they're predicting that what have they got? Uh, just sort of uh, 98. Uh, 98 seats to Labour's 468. Mm -hmm. um, that's the sort of reality. Uh, and I think, uh, but an earth is an earth, talking about Easter. Easter an earth is an earth. Uh, Very earth good. Like Easter Monday. But the reality <laughs> is this is that Rishi has to deliver on the f those five promises. Uh, and he hasn't yet called the election. He doesn't have to until the end of January. That's the very last date he can do it. And that, according to the things, that those are the rules. I think he can, it has to be December. Oh, no, he can call it in December. You then get a period election. of time. Yeah. So the period of time when the election voting will take place in January. the end of January. Yes. So he's got time to do it. And my advice to him would be wait until things improve. So he needs to see some sort of progress <laughs> in Rwanda. <laughs> Wait till things improve. I guarantee the gap will close. The gap will close between them at the moment. Oh, as it true. always does. You must remember, you must remember this. I always say Trump and Clinton. Uh -huh. And everybody laughed at Trump, didn't they? And I was probably one of the very few people who ever predicted that Trump was going to do it. And everybody woke up, they went to bed thinking Hillary's going to win it. We're all going to bed, we're going to sleep at night. And in the morning, there's Donald. So what's your prediction for this one? My then? prediction, oh, soon that's going to win massively. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, absolutely. Look, I, I think on the Conservatives have a big problem because, and I've said this, they seem as detached from reality as the rest, the rest of, of the entire cohort in Westminster. Ian Duncan Smith came out and said that we shouldn't vote for, the public shouldn't vote for reform because that's going to reverse pr Brexit progress and it's going to usher in a giant Labour majority. Okay. But, but I you like Rishi Sunak. Sunak. This is a man who could, be, who could be lying on a beach in the Caribbean if he wanted to. I, I, he I agree. dedicated his life and given back to this country. He's doing a good job, he's a steady pair of hands, and he took over this country when, let's face it, we were in rough waters. Inflation is down, he is the man to the job. He's just been very unlucky because came before him, you had, you know, Liz Truss, with all due respect, way the out of lettuce. that debt. Boris Johnson, whose moral <laughs> compass was, well, he hasn't got a moral compass. <laughs> and, and, and Rishi has un been unfortunate as he had to follow Two disasters. But, but you, say, you, say, you say that about Boris. Uh, to his credit, it was an 80-seat majority. He was the only politician at the time. That he was, they sort of called him the Heineken of politicians. He could reach the parts of the electorate, others couldn't. He's mm -hmm. now become the Marmite character. Mm -hmm. What we need are characters in politics, which is why I say don't write it off completely, because the reality is there will be delivery on those sort of things. But you're right, Esther, you need to tell people how they're going to benefit. And the way that you're going to do it is what Edward Bernays, who was the father of PR, said. The way that you convince the public is through fear. So if you say we're making progress, well, mm. oh no, you may, we're making progress in these areas, and if you change ships at this moment or change the captain for the ship, you're not going to carry on this great progress because there's no plan for Labour that he'll continue to say. Keep sending that message, and I guarantee the gap will close. Well, it's, talking of ships... <laughs> the, is that a ship? Talking of ships, <laughs> oh, ships with a P. Ships with a P, light, yeah, yeah, with <laughs> ships. The, the, the migrant, migrant ships, they, they're still oh, coming. Yeah, the We've uh, now passed the 5,000 mark. Yes. A new record. So yeah. soon, actually, please about that, right? He hasn't stopped the boats. He hasn't stopped the boats. I, I, I think I, I predict they will get maybe three flights off to Rwanda with all five go. people on them. So that will be another uh, shambolic display. Look, if we're going to... OK, let me, let me be gracious and say he has to stick to the plan and if it works. Uh, he hasn't done anything to bring down inflation. Inflation was always going to come it's down. Going to come so that, that, exactly, right. exactly. So that's always been a bit of a red herring. He hasn't stopped the boats. If anything, he's I think he's probably rolled out the red carpet for them because they're still coming. Uh, what else did he say? Fund the NHS. Well, uh, this week... Cut the waiting was, times. Cut the waiting this. times, exactly. This week it was found that over 230 people yeah, needlessly died because of a and &E waiting time. Awful. So he hasn't Absolutely approved awful. it. And even actually, that li the list, even if we're going to give him credit, is bogus because he should have said transform the NHS or provide better... Healthcare to the public, but back don't, to don't my but back, but back to migration because that's that's the record that is yes. now, well, exactly. now now proudly got. Keith, is there anything Sudak can do about migration that's going to change change the the, the, Look, the way we're, people are going to? Of course, Keir Starmer's going to say that this whole Rwanda policy is a bit of a gimmick, but in actual fact, it's interesting that they that they're saying if you come over, you get you're going to be on a plane to Rwanda. Rwanda, 
is doing enormous amounts of advertising at the moment to go and visit. It's not yeah. this is and, not and the hellhole that people think anymore. It, they sponsor my football team, Arsenal. Yes. Well, that's and that can't be better. There you go. No wonder it's a dangerous exactly. country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, They've well, got no the, taste. The reality, yeah. the reality is this, though. <laughs> Nobody wants to send anybody to Iran. The whole idea, and this is what you're talking about the focus, the focus should be on the uh, horrendous people traffickers. 100%. That's the thing. What we need to do is spend the money on tracking them down and dealing with that appropriately. The whole principle, if you're, the, the thing about small boats is crazy anyway. Because the thing is, you stop the boats or lose the votes. What's going to happen? Rwanda at the moment can only deal with 200 people. Mm -hmm. The amount of people coming in and out, there's legal migration as well. It's over a million people are coming in on student vi visas and so on and so forth. So we're missing the issue on that. What we need to do is, and what I love about this sort of show, especially when JJ does it with the crew, <laughs> is that we always shine more light and less heat. If you look at the real figures, they're over a million in terms of immigration. Yeah. These small boats are a distraction. I know people involved who are stopping a number of people from coming over. There's tens of thousands more who are trying to do it and mm -hmm. are getting stopped. So that's happening. But we're going to see... The boats are an issue. They're, they're they an need issue. to be done. And it's a public issue. But we're, we're going to see more boats coming this summer. We, we will. When, do. It's when it gets hotter, when the weather's exactly. better. Exactly. More so than 5,000 already people have come in since... Yeah. You know, so. so do you think that Sunak should call an election before summer? Ab never. Absolutely not. He should call an election after the American election. I've always said this. Yeah. I think if you... If when you, Donald you, you, Trump wins, you've yes. Ta you've <laughs> you've yeah. talked about fear. And, yes. I, and I don't think... I'm sorry, the Tories have done such a disastrous job that nothing that they do can put fear in the public because their track record has been scary enough. But they can say, look, a Rishi Sunak premiership looks a lot better if Trump wins the White House it again does. than a, a Keir Starmer premiership. And that is something I can actually buy into. Because I think we, don't, buy into we, don't, that, we don't have a plethora. Where's, where's Esther, the Brexit Esther, free Esther, trade deals? Esther, Where you, are they? Esther, you're into politics. Do you think John in Doncaster gives a monkeys who gets into power in, in the US? Of course but, he does. No, they don't. It's the largest no, economy oh, Johnny, in the world. Johnny, I was on the vote for Johnny Doncaster <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> and he tells me he cares about what, what Donald Trump's going to do. But you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Look at that sort of side. What we also need to look at are those other sort of elements. There will be that feel-good factor. And when I talk about fear, I'm talking about fear of the alternatives. Because at the moment, I've yet, at the moment, people are just voting negatively. There They're not turning around. They're not turning around and saying, oh, we're really for Keir Starmer, oh, we're really for Rishi. It's yeah. a negative vote. They haven't got confidence. And I always say trust comes in on foot but leaves on horseback. And trust in politicians, in our media, in our various services, is at an all-time low. What we need to do over the next few months is build that trust back up again. But I, th I, think, I think you're all wrong. I think most people, and Jonathan Goodis MP told me the same thing about his constituency in the north, in Stoke-on-Trent. Most people actually aren't that bothered about immigration as, as the top priority. They're bothered about potholes in our roads. Yes. You can't drive... That's a local, like local election. Yeah, local election. Like yeah. Um, they're bothered about the NHS. Mm -hmm. They're bothered about local jobs. Yes. And they're bothered about transport. Self-reservation. So, yes, yeah, self that, 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 that means they're worried about immigration because guess what? Unfettered immigration affects the NHS. Yes. It affects local housing. It affects councils. It affects all of these things that you just listed are people's top priorities. And, so and, inherently, they and, do care. And you're absolutely and, right. And we need a certain amount of immigration to make the wheels uh, turn. We need certain people working in the care homes and jobs that people don't want to do. To be perfectly honest, we need an immigration freeze, actually. The numbers that we're seeing now are so staggering that for the next five years, we need an actual freeze and say, let's bring it to 350,000. Let's have a certain number for certain industries. And over that, I'm sorry, you need to deal with what you have. And invest in the British okay, public. Okay, uh, listen, listen, And listen, AI listen. is the other thing. The, the three of you put a sock in it, OK? <laughs> we'll hear more from you a little later in the show, but thank you for now. <laughs> you are watching The Independent Republic of JJ. Up next, the Queen of Darkness, Sharon Osbourne, on her family, the Royals, and rock and roll. Sharon, I cannot wait to speak to you. Don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back. You're watching The Independent Republic of JJ. Now, this is the best video you are going to see today. It's from NASCAR on NBC this weekend, where NASCAR racer Joey Gase's car was damaged and spun out of the race, which he seemed to think was the fault of his rival, Dawson Cram. So, he ripped the bumper off his damaged vehicle, walked over to the car still racing, waited for Cram to come by, and then threw the bumper at the car. That is literally the ultimate in bad sportsmanship. The cost of an annual BBC TV licence has shot up from £159 to £169.50 after a two-year freeze ended. So you can basically get everything online. Talk TV is moving online. You, I mean, most, most news stations are streamed online now. So really, what is the case for the BBC 
I don't in the current model. I don't really see. Well, it. let's go to my legal advisor. I, I will tell you exactly what the position is. Online is the new front line. You're absolutely yeah. right, and you do not make money from news. And what you do need is the, the question. I, I, as you know, host for the Royal Television Society. I do their podcast for them, and I interviewed the great and good of the BBC. We celebrated the centenary, and my question to them was, well, what's next? For the next hundred years. So the question was not how. Well, the first question is, do we need the BBC? And the basic answer to that is, well, do you need a public broadcaster who is independent of commercial objectives, independent yes. of reliant on that sort of stuff? It therefore needs to be financed in some sort of way. Yeah. What they were talking about is, well, let's look at the different ways that you could finance it. And I personally believe that it should be available to everybody, which means that it should be perhaps means tested mm -hmm. so that you can uh, you can look at that sort of side. Because otherwise, broadcasts will not be doing the great content that the BBC Me means does. Test means testing is, is, is completely unsustainable. I think, yes, you should have a public broadcaster to maintain certain standards because uh, companies, media companies that are commercially driven obviously have an agenda. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I do think you need to cut out all the fluff. There's so many things that the BBC offers that it shouldn't. It shouldn't, the, the Strictly's of the world and all these. Why shouldn't it offer Strictly's? It's well, well, because, it's, because we, we, we have enough sources of entertainment. That's the point. If you have a public broadcaster that's there to maintain standards, certain journalistic standards and certain standards within news, which again, it has a tough job doing, but I think you should have that on in principle. Yeah. You don't need Strictly. You can, if you want to watch something dancey, you can watch it on Netflix. But, and, and, and you're right, also, and, and that, that was the other question, because you're getting great things, you're getting great dramas yeah, and so honestly, on and so if, forth, if the, and you look at that sort of stuff. cut to like 50 quid a year, but it only gave us the essentials in news, in, in public information, and in things that like BBC, for instance, that students used yes. to learn, fine, that's fine. Yeah. But <clears throat> everything else, all the fluff, all so the... So you get rid of uh, all the dramas, all the period oh, absolutely. dramas, mm -hmm. no more strictly. Well, everyone even, else even is doing though, period yeah, So what? But the channels are doing news, by that, by that sense. Well, they, well, they, do don't, they don't need to do we news. We do news, so the BBC stopped doing they're, news. They're what are they doing? They're, they're educating. Other, other independent channels and their commercial model is down Strictly is one of the most popular... But if the BBC... Yeah. If the BBC is one of the most, is one of the most popular shows. Let the ITV buy it. Let ITV buy it. And you can also look at those sort of things, because there's two sides to the BBC. One is the stuff which is financed through the licence fee. The other is the commercial arm. Yeah. And yeah. actually, I'm, I'm going down this time next week. I'll be in Cannes, the TV festival, no. uh, where I present down there yeah, and do various other things. Yeah. But they're selling programs. And the BBC is one of the biggest brands in the world in terms yeah. of broadcasting. Yeah. And that's what you look at. So the financing is slightly different there. The point about means testing is not you don't want the laborious side of it, but people who can't afford it, you may, may do it on the tax returns or whatever, yeah, yeah, they can yeah. generally should have access to this content. It should punch way above its weight in terms of quality and trust and everything else. That's what we need to look at. So I think, but these things cost money. But you need to be able to have somebody that, as an independent would, broadcaster. If you means test it, the people that can afford it will just say, actually, I probably don't need it. And so you have a smaller and smaller pool of people, the wealthier people in this means testing model that will just drop off a cliff. I don't, and I don't think, think so. that's sustainable. Wealthy people will just keep on paying for everything. But Keith, <laughs> what, Keith what if you, that's um, what if, what if BBC put out an apology? End of this year, they put out an apology and they say, you know what, we've had a look through, we've, we've done what the police do, we've marked our own homework, we've, we've ported ourselves to Ofcom and we've come out and we're going to say, actually, we apologise to the world, not to the Jewish community, but to the world for our bias reporting. Look, it, listen, Would you come back to I, I don't know if you know, many years ago, a number of years ago, you had the Bainham Report, which is actually an independent study conducted to see if the BBC were biased. They spent over a half a million of British taxpayers' money not revealing the contents of the Bainham Report because yeah. they were scared of what was going to be revealed. I'm sorry, that is more taxpayers' money down the drain. Honestly, BBC is dated, the, the licence fee is dated. People don't even want to watch the BBC. I watch Talk TV principle. all day, every day, and I don't need the BBC. <laughs> so how, how would you... Fi but, but, but to be fair, though, how would you finance the BBC? I wouldn't. You wouldn't? If they want to go commercial and finance it the but way... They, they don't want to go commercial. Most that, of their income the comes from... If, but the point is this. If they go commercial, there's certain programming that will not be made yeah. because it's not commercial. Yeah, okay. You do not make money from news. That, that, that's the reality. Everyone will tell you you don't make money from news. You've, you've got to work then on the basis that if we need those programmes, and never, we live in a diseased information age at the moment. Mm -hmm. I, I, do, I also host something called Fake or Fact, where you're looking at that sort of stuff, the whole thing about fake news, challenging those sort of stories. We need some independent public broadcasters who basically can hold people's feet to the fire and examine those things. Well, and no, that I, needs I, to be financed. Well, if you'd like to know any more about what Eborn does when he's not here, <laughs> I'll show you follow him on Twitter. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, Andrew Eborn, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, the trans football team battering the women's team 
in Australia. You might have heard my rant about it. What earlier. a surprise. What a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. No, the reality, your brilliant rant, and well done. You're entitled to rant about these sort of things. Uh, respect I, is always key, but it's respect for all people in the conversation. Mm -hmm. The reason certain sports divide it between those who have sort of physical strength and those who have a different physical strength is exactly that. Yeah. So if you introduce people who have a bigger physical, yeah. um, who are uh, physically less able, or less strong rather, yeah. not able, on that sort of basis. If they all want to play darts, that's fantastic. If it's football or lifting weights or whatever it is, it's unfair. I don't, it, I don't care what it is. It's, if it's, if, so far as it's a sport, men and women, that is the end of the conversation. It doesn't need to be darts or anything else because there'll always be a physical difference. This <laughs> world has gone mad. Of course, yes. women, uh, men should not be con putting a skirt on and competing in a women's tennis match. You know what? One of the most... That's woke, horrifying. One of the most woke was tennis. Dangling? Can you imagine a man in a skirt playing it's tennis? It's ridiculous. What's, what's Listen, oh, let no. me give you a reverse example, OK? I um, host a tennis podcast, Rock and Roll Tennis, for any of you guys who want to, want to tune in. But listen, <laughs> Serena Williams... How do you find out? Listen to it. <laughs> Don't exactly. pay the license, license. fee. <laughs> Don't pay, but, but Don't pay that ask. fee, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. Serena Williams, yes. who most people recognise as the most, possibly the best women's tennis player yeah. ever, many people recognise that her power was almost that of a man. But when John McEnroe, a few yes. years ago, said if she was playing in a men's game, she wouldn't beat the man, uh, uh, the, any man in the top 800. Mm -hmm. She lambasted him, OK? It's a kind of similar sort of thing. Women, as you said, uh, Esther, women in women's sports, men in men's sports. End of story. Yeah. But, but look at the mischief, and this is the whole reason it was set up in that sort of difference. And as they say, but it's also about respect. Just put a bit of balance on it. I don't mind people if, if, whatever they want to do. If they will identify as a woman, let them identify as a woman. But there is a difference in terms of sport and so on and so forth. Yeah. And I think respect involves respect for everybody in the conversation. Yeah, you know, uh, there's, you know, there's no rules in the Premier League or anywhere in the English Football Association. There's no rule saying that women cannot play with the men. Women go. can play with the men. The reason there's no women playing with the men is because they're not good enough to get into any of those teams. In the same way, I'm not playing in the Premier League because I'm not good enough. It's a same but there are rules yeah. in women's football that men cannot play because we are stronger if you go in a tackle a 50 50 yeah. man versus woman the woman is going to get injured but, and yeah. this but what is why you had the differences introduced in the first place this is why you introduced the difference between uh, biological sex as it originally sort of started yeah and without being inflammatory in terms of the language look at the differences if sport didn't matter about those physical differences then you just have i, I say this is why darts may be slightly different and so on and so forth or snooker uh -huh. you can do that sort of thing but things like formula one driving when they encourage everybody it's if it's skill-based, yeah. make, that makes sense. Well, but wrong. where there's an unfair physical advantage, it's rather like he heavyweights in boxing or yeah. bantam weights and so on and so forth. You try and divide it up on that sort of basis. But I do want a system where I said the trouble, and every time we discuss this, it becomes so inflammatory, we need to make sure there is respect for everybody, mm -hmm. but work out the reasons there are the rules there in the first I, place. I, I, even, I don't even agree with the whole, even if you can't see physical differences, then don't segregate, because it's about the integrity of female sports. So it's not just about, okay, darts, you don't have that much physical differences between men and women, so you should be able to compete against each other. Yeah. It's the integrity of the sport. If it's a female sport oriented towards females, it should only have females. But end up. I don't care whether you know men and women would likely perform on the same level. Women have fought so hard to actually be recognized. I say this publicly, I don't watch women's football because it's terrible. It's god awful. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, you have to protect the integrity of the sport. But like, there are many women that have fought very hard but to as be I, given attention. But Esther, as I said earlier, it's women who are going to be the ones out crying now and saying, okay. how dare we speak about trans women and stop them from playing in sport? Yeah. You know what I mean? it it's ain't, mad women, yeah. It's mad women. But anyway, let's, let's stick with football. England Wags going to spend 100k on private bodyguards for the So the, the, it's a bargain. So, so <laughs> <laughs> what you have to look at is this, and I always look at these stories and you sort of turn around and say, well, how many people is that? covering for and for how many days. I mean, how many wags are there? You work on the basis there's a team, but they've got one each and so on and so forth. If you're talking about security guards and how much time is being spent, then that's what's going to happen. If they're talking about private security. So there's two issues. There's one is the cost, which you need to divide down, well, how many wags and how many people make that make sense. The other is the more concerning thing, which is about safety mm -hmm. at these events. And this is the real concern because the increase in violence, the increase in terrorist threats and so on and so forth is absolutely horrendous. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm actually curious how they calculated that hundred. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's like a headline figure, but if you've got 22 wags or one person might have several wags. I don't, you, don't, you don't know how many wives and girlfriends there might be. That's what they need to look at. And how many security people is that paying for over what period? It probably is a highly rate, you know? You look yeah, at that exactly. sort of basis. Yeah. I, I must tell you, from what I've read, first of all, the wags are paying for it. 
That's the first thing. Well, first of all, let's get it right. They're not paying the for it. They've just been lucky enough to, to get their boyfriend's credit card and they're going to pay for it off that. Well done. But listen, the point is, this whole WAGs thing is a bit of a joke. Most of them haven't got a brain cell be uh, between them. Oh! Right? No, you know what I mean? oh, you can't whoa. say that. No, 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 no with you all due respect, right? They're, I mean, they're, I agree with they you. They are there. <laughs> thank you. They are there <laughs> because they bagged a footballer. And I've been in central London not, not for a long time, where you go to a nightclub and there's girls who turn up to a nightclub because they want to bag a... A, uh, a, a professional Is that the one where you pretend the to be a footballer? Is, is they that... should not be anywhere near the, uh, the Euros because, let's face it, at the end of the day, the players need to concentrate on winning something. We haven't won anything for how many years? Was it 58 years? Well, they're there for moral support. Yeah, exactly. No, you're, you're absolutely support. wrong. They're, they're there, to, they're there to, 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 I would... to put Botox up, put some makeup on, I would... and improve their Instagram. I account. would say I would say that the wags we have today are not the good ones. Yeah, back in the day, uh, the back Victoria in, Beckham, Cheryl, yeah. Apollo, those are proper they wags. They were quality absolutely. ones. Absolutely. Now, These are no just... Rooney versus Vardy, the best legal case we've had for a long time. You know what? The wags of the past were made of different stuff. You're right. And whilst I would I really disagree with that. So I have to say that women's football has got so good. It's and, terrible. And, and, Absolutely I, I, not. And, and you should, you should. Able, able and, able and, put but it got the it, nation. We, the, 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 football's coming home, but it was the lionesses who brought it. Yep. Where are the wabs? Wabs? Hey, boy, You can put the sock in. It. <laughs> hey, where are the wabs? Where are the wabs? Women's football. <laughs> what about yeah? He can't even throw. He throws like a girl. Oh, there's no hats. Husbands and boyfriends. Speaking of the Euros, though, it's going to be in Germany. Have a look at the German kit. Check this. Let's have a look. So this is. Been uh, oh lambasted because they're saying that that 44 looks like the SS. It does look like the SS. <laughs> it does, that, isn't it? That, that is not good. Right now, I don't know which player wears the oh, 44 for Germany. I think this kit is a homage to the one from 1990s. Really? But that, yeah, that I think it's from the bit, 1990s. I mean, that's. It, it, it does look, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's the first time I saw, the, yeah. saw that, that, that's exactly what I thought. It's been and banned, it's been banned already. I'm not surprised it's been banned. And this has been the scandal this season about football kits. You know, it's like the England flag. What yeah. on earth have they done with that? Yeah. You know, a flag is a flag. You don't need to alter it. Work on that sort of basis. Well, we'll discuss that next, but, you know, just briefly on the flag. Nigel Farage used to ha have the Union flag made purple when he was in charge of UKIP. Yeah. No one complained about that, did they? Well, I'm complaining now. Well, you're complaining you can't now. The flag. Good. You can't the flag. <laughs> Put it on a fish and chip shop, however, and that's different. <laughs> Um, Germany. Yes. Sticking, sticking in, I love Germany. So I'm staying there for three stories. Um, they have partially partially decriminalised cannabis. Keith, I bet you'll be happy about this, won't you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come clean. I have, in my long history, uh -huh. have actually tried cannabis. OK. okay. Oh. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. No, You're I, never going to America now, mate. I, I'm, my <laughs> friend's... <laughs> my, He's not paid his licence fee. <laughs> All the lawyers are on the phone. I'm going to walk out of here with hands up. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, I yes. went to Amsterdam many years ago with some yes. friends. And I've never, ever done drugs. And we went there. I remember we get, went into a cafe and I was eating hash cakes and I was smoking super skunk. Sorry, I, I, I shouldn't really be admitting to this. And I've got friends to this day. It suddenly hit me at the end of the day. I literally couldn't walk. My legs had turned to the leg. <laughs> I would never, and I never have done it again. And friends of mine still to this day mock me and say that when you OD'd on cannabis, <laughs> do I think it should be legal? You know what? Uh, it's a very I think, I think difficult... I think we're getting there. I mean, th the reason why Germany did this is because they're kind of sick of having uh, loads of Germans go over to, uh, to the Netherlands since they legalized, um, sort of legalized weed 50 years ago and going over there to smoke. So the, the, the Dutch have been like, listen, we're getting too many German tourists. Can you please do something about it? But I think eventually the UK will follow suit. Look, since 2010, 80% of all drug offenses have been for minor possession, right? We have 11,000 people in prisons on drug, drug offenses. We're spending all of this money, the war on drugs has failed. We've never had a formal review of, of the, the Drugs Act of 1971. 50 years of legislation that has clearly not worked because drug use has gone up through the roof. Um, drugs have become cheaper and more potent, and yet we've never reviewed failing drug policy. We're spending millions and millions of, yeah. of, of, of pounds on it every, or hundreds of millions actually. Or, but how far billions. Do you take it, Esther? Well, I mean, because you know, yes, of course, you don't want a society. You don't legal? want a society of potheads. No. You don't oh. want. You don't want a society where you're encouraging people to smoke marijuana. And, I get and the that. idea is, but as the well way the way to get around that isn't to ban it. You it, have exactly. to you have to socialize. You are born. I was going to just tell you what the rules are, so, so people understand. It's basically from the first of April today. It's not not a, a full thing. Over 18s can possess up to 25 grams of cannabis in public, yeah. which is a lot. 
Uh, the adults can grow three plants, which are actually quite difficult to grow. He'll tell you why. <laughs> uh, but, but they are, so that's quite difficult. But people won't be allowed to smoke joints within sight of schools, sports centres or pedestrian zones between 7 and, and, and 8 o'clock. But from the 1st of July, they can start having social clubs where you get 500 members. Now, the idea is to stop the, the black marketing thing, to stop the drug dealers mm. and, and to work out a sensible way of having the conversation. But there's also the medicinal benefits of things like cannabis that people should look at. So it's a sensible conversation about this. Get rid exactly. Now. Get rid of the myths about it because they say a lot of people say it's a gateway drug. Well, is it? We need to look at that sort of side. If it stops the criminalisation uh, and, and gets the drug dealers out of the picture, that's got to be helpful. Well, I mean, the real the real question, the real problem is obviously cocaine yep. and, and methamphetamines and, and sort of higher class drugs. How do you deal with that? Of course, you don't want to legalise it, but at the same time. You know, the war on drugs has failed. Drugs has won. Con you know, congratulations to drugs. And we need to find a way to, <clears throat> to stop lining the pockets of drug dealers by yeah. having by, by spending money on the wrong thing. Right, well, during the break, I think we should have security come in and search Keith. <laughs> I, 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 he, he's a god of forever. <laughs> yeah. he, he's got more charges against him than Trump. <laughs> you are watching the Independent Republic of JJ. After the break, hot off the press, we take a look at some of tomorrow's front pages. We'll see you then. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching The Independent Republic of Mike Graham on Talk TV with me, JJ and Nisyobi. And now, it's time for this. The World of Woke. Now, it doesn't take a genius to know that the swastika is a symbol of racism, but apparently, it does take an idiot to defend its use. Our wonderful and great Met Police showed once more why they cannot be trusted to keep us safe. It's bad enough they don't seem interested in actually investigating crimes anymore, like shoplifting or burglaries. And I haven't been a fan of them and the way in which they target certain groups of using their power with stop and search. But I have to commend them for going above and beyond over the weekend to show the world how completely woke they've gone in what I assume is a bizarre, twisted attempt to not offend Nazis. We saw one copper actually tried to claim that the swastika was not anti-Semitic. In footage taken during a pro-Palestine march in London, a woman can be seen telling a hapless officer that a different Bobby had told her that a swastika was not necessarily anti-Semitic or a description of public order. He starts explaining the public order act to the woman before she asks, could you just explain under what context the swastika is not disrupting public order? The officer replies, I haven't said anything about it. That it is or it isn't, everything needs to be taken in context, doesn't it? Take a look at this. In what context is a swastika not anti-Semitic and disrupting public order? That was my question. I don't have an in-depth knowledge of science and symbols. I know the swastika was used by the Nazi party during uh, their inception and the period of them being in power in Germany in the 1930s. I am aware of that. I just can't believe this conversation is actually happening. So what, what, what exactly are you confused about? What, what I'm confused is how you don't, in what context the swastika is not anti-Semitic. This is what I want to know, because again... Well, I suppose, to some, I don't know uh, how everybody would feel about that song. Are you having a laugh? Listen up, PC Pillock. There is no context in any world where the Nazi swastika is anything but a racist symbol. If you see a swastika anywhere, it's racist. It is undeniably anti-Semitic. What part of that don't you bloody get? The Met Police have stressed that the person with the swastika sign had already been arrested at the time of this conversation. But that's not quite good enough, is it? Why don't your officers actually know what a racist symbol is? Why won't they just say, yes, that symbol is anti-Semitic? Or... Are they too afraid of offending the Nazis? What are they going to do next? Tell us that Adolf Hitler wasn't all that bad, actually? Will we see Ku Klux Klan rallies on our streets with coppers excusing their presence, saying, well, we don't know if they're a racist group. They could just be dressed as ghosts for Halloween. So, Mark Rowley, these are your officers, and you need to get this sorted, because too many people in this capital do not feel safe with your bozo bobbies on the beats. The world of woke. Well, gosh, the panel is still with me. 
Yeah. Just a quick reaction off the back of that, that little rant of mine about the swastika and the Mets. Let me put it in perspective. You're absolutely right. It all depends on context. And it is... <laughs> no, 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 I'll tell you what it depends on context. The swastika is an ancient religious and cultural symbol. Is, is yes, what you're saying. yes. It is important. But absolutely, in that context, it's clearly if it's a, a march it's and it's... Injured, and it's yeah. a, you need to look at that sort of stuff. But, and there, but there are still cultures around the world... But not, use it for but not in the same... Not, it's a different symbol. The, the Nazis bastardised the original... Oh, no, you're, you're absolutely yeah. right. And that's why I say it's so important about context. Yeah. But that's... So, Obviously, just, the people carrying it during that the, it, exactly. there was to be insidious. We're using the Nazi swastika exactly. as well. Exactly. I, I, I do, uh, I do feel sorry for, for the police, though, because, again, there are good, hard-working police. I completely agree with you, JJ, that the Met Police needs to be completely disbanded and, and you have to bring back community policing with a vengeance and all of that. But, I mean, I just... I, I can't imagine being... Obviously, we, we work in broadcasting, but I can't imagine being filmed as a police officer for making this 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 one one gaffe. It was obviously a mistake. One gaffe, uh, Jimmy. No, but it's, it was Keith, obviously a mistake. But Keith, I feel sorry Keith, for this. Keith, yeah. you are you are a practicing right. Jew. How do you feel about this? How do I feel about this? This is not just one incident. Uh huh. Okay. You've seen in recent weeks a guy holding up a sign, Hamas is terrorist, being pinned to the ground. Yeah. Okay. At these pro. Palestinian rallies, they're not actually pro-Palestinian rallies, they're anti-Israel rallies, anti-Jewish rallies in a lot of the cases mm -hmm. of people there. This is not an isolated incident. The police are not doing their job. Yes, I feel sorry for the police because they've got a hard job. I give you that, Esther. But the truth is, these marches have been 11 of them since the 7th of October. Not one of those people on those marches has said, release the hostages. Not one. Yeah. And, the, and you have people... With with the uh, star of David being um, a bin. Yeah. A picture of them like put in the yeah. bin mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff like that and the police are doing zilch nothing and the point is this is not an isolated incident the police need to start doing their job Sadiq Khan I genuinely hope that uh, that you either do something or get voted out in May because this is just unacceptable well let's go to the front page of the Sun now uh, more furore about one of our flags. Union jokes is the headline. Ebon, tell me about this story. Well, I'll tell you, it's very simple. Look, this is yet another thing on the front page of the Glorious Sun. Here it is. Shame, look, uh, what I was saying earlier about uh, working on that sort of principle. The flag is the flag. You don't mess with the flag. What they're doing here is a design thing, which is helping to sort of peddle merchandise. And that's the biggest problem on this sort of stuff. You talk about Nigel, everybody's mate, Nigel Farage, <laughs> uh, working on, on that sort of basis. But you need to turn around, because otherwise people are easily going to get offence. Mm -hmm. And I think if you work on that sort of thing, this is the flag which is represented as the flag. This is a design thing to help peddle merchandise is a different aspect. Yeah, I, I personally, I don't hate this union flag. If they're doing it just for Team GB, I don't hate it. But I do think... They wouldn't go to Saudi Arabia and say to them, your flag's pretty good, guys, but we've made this one with some rainbows in it. Uh, what do yeah. you think? I, are you I mean, absolutely I mean, right. I, I, this, this is the thing. I think we should give these, these manufacturers as much liberty as they want, with one exception. The flag, unadulterated, must be featured in a prominent position. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. You can have, like, a, you know, a tap-dancing monkey if you want to. But there must be a union jack... <laughs> there must be a union jack, as we yes. all know it, there, prominent... And, and for everyone to see, if you want to have a bunch of symbols or bozos yeah. around it, that's fine. But you cannot alter the British flag. I think that's fair because you wouldn't do it. Anyway and that else. should be fair to everybody. And you're exactly. working, but, but you would think because about it's artistic it, license. Exactly. Yeah, but and you have the their Olympics limits. during the Olympics. They they all do that. They, they they look at the colours, the red, white, and blue, and they come up with something creative. Mm -hmm. But I say that's the merchandising side of it. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. Have somewhere where it says make, make it simple. The law must be you must have the flag. Yeah. And represented in that sort of way. But of course, you can do wonderful things with the design. Exactly. And then people at won't least be a third arms. of the image must be the Keith, flag. I've got, yeah. I, I, I'm going to have to say something completely contrary. I've got a problem with it. And I'll tell you why I haven't got a problem with it. Why do you hate the our country? Olympic Keith? Games. Why do you hate our country? <laughs> <laughs> I love my country. <laughs> but hear me out. The Olympic Games are nothing but a commercial, uh, um, you know, commercial event. Yeah, of we course. We know that. These people well, more than want to event. make money. Yeah. How, you, you know, at the end of the day, they deface. The England kit, the deface, even, even, listen, you know, we're talking about football. Traditional colours of a football team have even been changed. Why? Because the, but, I mean, the, that, the manufacturer that could want to make be, money. That could be the Chilean flag. You what, sorry? That could be the Chilean flag. We have no idea. I mean, um, fundamentally, we know more about flags Team, than GB, I do, Team GB uniforms has to have 
the British flag as we know it yes. somewhere. It, exactly. And then you can do all the design around it. I understand artistic license. You want to keep it fresh and funky and you want to keep yeah. people interested. Cool. But at least a third of the image has to have the Union Jack Absolutely. as we know and, it. And I have to say, just in defence of, of things like the Olympics, they're not just about the commercial stuff at all. It's Aren't not about they? sports. No, Aren't they? absolutely you've got You've got a fast food restaurant, one of the Golden Arches, sponsoring it. And Why are you having someone that's making Flo B sponsoring health? No, there, there, are Come on. there are commercial aspects to it. But it's all about wonderfulness, about getting people together, uniting about sport. This is how it all started. So I'll take issue on with that one. But, and, <laughs> well, and a number of other things. It's a sporting <laughs> event that's supposed to promote sport, yes. unity, Good health. Yes. He's talking about oh, a fast food event. You've also on. got another another company, a, a beer. A fizzy drink company that's not Pepsi, yeah. I believe. Uh, um, <laughs> Correct. Uh, advertising. I mean, with respect, it's a commercial exercise. I love the Olympics. Well, no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. Let's, but let's it's commercial. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move money. On I want to get this story in. Defiant JK. Yes. She's in the sun. JK goes to war against trans zealots. I, and I'm in front of the metro. She says, come and arrest me. Yes. Yes. J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling, as in bowling. Um, <laughs> just, so you know. just, so, just so we know. So, J.K., I'm so, I feel so sorry for J.K. And, and the things that's happened. She's been banned from even attending events where her intellectual property are being used, the whole Harry Potter thing, and so on and so forth. That is appalling. The issue here is about, which another law which has come in today, is about the Scottish hate law, effectively, yeah. and turning round. And for, again, it's about definition. Because you can turn around and whilst there are freedom of speech, there aren't freedom from consequences. Uh -huh. And if something is genuinely going to be hateful, then you should absolutely stamp that out. What we don't know yet, however, is the definition. It's woolly language. So just saying, if she uh, maintains her view that mm -hmm. a woman is a woman and you can't have, uh, you can't be a man in a, in a dress and become a woman. Basic biology. I mean, that, that's what she says. Yeah. Is, is she entitled to that view? And yes. That, and, and no, well, no, this is the point. So if the new law says that she's going to get prosecuted and it's going to be a criminal offence, then that's an issue because we must have freedom of speech and anything that curtails that freedom of speech needs to be really, really carefully looked at. And that's happening around the world. There's similar things in Canada. They Ebon, had the online harm. Ebon, I completely hear you. I understand exactly what you're saying. But ultimately, I can say that uh, a, a double rapist is not a woman and that could potentially end up me being in prison. But I could talk about this all night and we will after the credits have rolled. Thank you to the panel. Thank you so much. That is all from me tonight. You've been watching The Independent Republic of JJ and Nisiobi. A huge thank you to my war cabinet. And I'll be back tomorrow at 8pm, only here on Talk TV. Good night.